Okay, for this experiment, I wanted to play around with image transfers, and I wanted to play with image transfers and also just gluing image down that is the same image. Uh, as you can see here, I reverse the image because when I do the image transfer, what's going to happen, since I'm going to glue this down to this fabric, she's going to be turning in the right direction. So just keep that in mind when you make, uh, and I'll have, if, if you want the these images, I'll send you um, both of these images, one uh, in this direction and one in this direction. So the one that I'm going to do just in this direction, I'm just going to glue it down to this fabric. And this is just like a piece of, well, I, I use vintage fabric, but you can use you can use any kind of canvas or, you know, anything from the, um, the store, you know, the fabric store. You can, you can just get any kind of uh, canvas or whatever, white uh, or cream color fabric. So I, um, I'm just going to glue this down, this particular one. So I'm going to just, with my matte medium, I'm going to glue it in the back. And then just kind of glue it in the front. Put it down, make sure that's really burnished down there so that there's no bubbles. And look at the other side. I don't know what that is. Because you can use often, you can look at the other side and you can see if there's any bubbles. See a little bit there. I think it's good. Okay, and I'm going to put a nice layer. I might put a couple. I'm going to let this dry. I might put a couple of layers. And then what happens, it starts to look kind of encaustic. And you can actually add cold wax on this if you want to. But not everyone has it, so I don't want everyone to have to go out and buy it. Although it's just a fun, and I'm going to be exploring more with cold wax, believe me. That's going to be one of the experiment where I put the cold wax and then I let it dry and then let it dry and then I go in there with the tool and like carve into it. So, okay, so that part is done for that. And so I'm just going to put this over here and let this dry. Oh, wait a minute. First, I want to figure out, okay, I have this piece. And I mean, you don't have to have a, 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 you know, a fancy lacy thing like this. It's just, I, and anyone that knows me knows I like that stuff, so I'm going to use it. Um, so, okay. So, okay. All right, that looks like that's good. Make sure you don't have any little lumps in there. Lumps are bad, and straggly threads are bad. Okay, so what I'm going to do is kind of line that up there and not all of it's going to be on there. So it looks like that. Okay, see that's the other side of it. Okay, there's a little bit of the mount medium on here on the back side. 
and you want to wipe that off because otherwise that's going to seal in there and you'll never get this thing off. I'm actually, since I'm not using the top, I'm going to wipe this off. I might use it for something else or not. Okay. And this little bit here needs it. Okay. So I need to let each of these dry. This one especially. I'm going to let this one dry overnight. It looks like it's going to be fine. Okay. All right. So at this point, I can't do anything more. So I'm going to turn the camera off and I will see you in the morning. So I have my, my two pieces here. And with the matte medium on here, it's pretty substantial and it feels really good. So I'm going to put that aside and then I'm going to take this and we're going to take away the paper. I have these magic erasers by Mr. Clean. You can get them in the grocery store or they have cheaper brands as well. And it'll help you start to rub off this transfer. And that's what you keep doing. You keep rubbing this off. I'm probably going to tear this part. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. We'll see what happens. Leave, leave yours there. If, if I want to use it, I can always fix what I tore. It might be a cool overlap. We'll see. No, nope. I ripped it. Well, at least maybe this will work. Just leave me a little bit there. Oh, darn. Well, that's that. Maybe I could use a little bit of that. I might print another one and use, use that leftover. Or not, we'll see. Okay, so you can see that I got most of it off, but see this cloudy area? That is uh, still paper that's left over. Um, but what I wanted to do is, and I'll get a link of this. This, this is a, a real wire brush and it can distress fabric. And so I didn't want this to be straight across like that. I wanted to kind of cut it and then angle it a little bit so 
I'm going to just do like that. And then it's going to tear. And then I'm going to angle it up here. And then angle it up some more. And then go down. So you kind of get this uneven edge. And then what you do with this wire brush, you want it to fray. So, sorry for the metal chair. harder to spray because of the matte medium surface, but you, you can achieve it. But I think I might do it on the other side so that I'm not ruining the, the image. doesn't have the matte medium, it is, you can really distress it much more. See that? But let's see what we can do to we can turn it over like this. could do is I might elongate this instead of having it like this I might do something like that okay so the bottom part I, I figured out I wanted to make some rips in here so I started here, and I'm just going to tatter this thing. Okay, I forgot I was I wasn't in camera when I was doing some of this slashing. So I'm just I'm just going to get a piece of fabric here and show you what you're going to see in the next section. But I'm doing it, and I'm completely out of camera. So I'm I'm just slashing this fabric that has the um, transfer on it because I want to make some holes so you just kind of go and go in like this and then you can kind of tear it that you just start out with your scissors
and then you can then you tear it. And that's basically that's basically the technique. It's just like just trashing the hell out of this this fabric to get it so it's all and you can even pull it pull it up in the other direction so you're getting all this you're getting all these holes so that's basically what I was doing but I was doing it off camera so you couldn't see a damn thing see I get to swear in these videos because they're free you know, I, I can do whatever I want because <laughs> they're free. Oh, God. Keeping it real, okay? There. Maybe pull it in another direction there. I think so. Let's see if you can see it better. I'll put a blue background and then you can probably see more of what is going on. But I, I really, I, I trash a lot of this piece. I, want, I just want it to be really, really just holding on by a thread. Okay, so that's that's basically what I was doing that you'll be seeing. And I'll probably speed it up so that you don't have to watch me not doing anything. Okay? Just kind of start it and then kind of rip it. Just rip it up. Sharp scissors. Yeah, I want this piece to be all tattered and worn. So in real time, I didn't like that, so I took all that off. I'm going to just go in with the Distress Ink. I have a feeling that uh, the oxides are too old and they're not working. Yeah, it starts to look like an old photograph.
Okay, so now I'm, I'm going to do with this piece, I'm just going to get some gesso and make sure that it's just a real light coat. And just kind of pounce it on. I'm going to put a little bit of the uh, ink on the edge of this piece. And then I take a lot of it out. I'm all about like putting it in and then wiping and just kind of leaving a stain. And just a little bit more. into that place. Okay, let's see where we're at now. Okay, and then the final thing to do before we go into stitching is I want to add some charcoal. moldy looking. You could do really dark up there. Thank you. 
Sorry about that. That's in fact I'm going to turn this all the way down my phone because we have a door thing and it's every time they open the door it makes that noise. Okay. So then I'm going to add some here and see how that's just going to meld right into into that piece there. thing you can do if it's like too much you can get your gesso out and this is another thing I figured out when I was experimenting you can make these little moldy pieces like here if I want to make this kind of a So I have all this chunky stuff happening here. Let's see if I want to do some down here. Too dark, so I'm just going to get so my gesso. I didn't like it, so I'm going to take it away. And I have the legs back. I kind of like the legs the way they are, so I don't think they need the charcoal. I like having the lines of the legs showing there. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is just glue this down. Just in areas. And you're probably wondering, well, why did you do that transfer of the, you know, this bottom part where you just kind of ripped and distressed everything? Well, because you see things appearing. So if I just did nothing, you wouldn't have that. You wouldn't have these legs peeking through. So it's just, it's, it's all part of this particular process, which I have no idea what it is, other than I'm playing in front of the camera for you guys, and uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. This one was not working for a while, I have to say. It was like I almost scratched it, but I thought, no, let me see. I'm going to try something else, because I tried the, um, the Distress Oxides, and they didn't work. They, they didn't. I, these might be old. They said so they didn't work well. Um, so I had to, you know, get rid of that idea. And then I just stayed with the distressed inks. And this is the crushed, um, brushed, brushed corduroy is what this is. Okay. So I just did a couple of places where I. Um, I did the matte medium. I didn't put it all all over, just in some parts. Oh, I see some stuff here I don't like. Let's see. 
So you can wipe. That's the thing. Is you just you wipe, and then it just keeps distressing it. The more you add and then wipe, you just keep distressing it more and more. I just want to see what it's going to look like in the book because that's where it's going to go. And yeah, I'll just have a place like that. So, but let's see what happens. Oh, I might leave. The, I might put that over there. Have that in there. But um, I'm just going to let this sit, and then I'll get some um, thread. Okay, guess what I'm doing? I'm ripping this. I'm going to have two pieces. I think what was bothering me is it was a square. So I'm like, I'm telling you, these are experimental videos, guys. This isn't like all slicked up <laughs> videos. This is me just trashing shit in my studio. Okay, let's see. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What did I do? Okay, this that's left. I have this piece here. And then I have this, which I think... See, I like this. I like that showing up there. That was ink um, that's, that uh, went through that fabric. So, I have this piece here, which I really like. I have this thing. Okay, I decided to stop this video because it's getting too long for what I want to do. And so next week I'm going to be stitching these. And as you can see here, I just added some crimson, a lizard and crimson, a little bit of white. I wanted a little bit of color here. So that's what I did with this piece. And next week I'm going to be doing some stitching. Now on this piece, I added a little bit of silk organza. I didn't do too much. I don't know if I'm going to add color to this piece because I like it the way it is, but I will be doing some stitching and some unusual shapes, probably circles or half circles, a dome. I'm not quite sure, but um, so look forward to next week uh, to finish this project because it is unfinished, but I think I'm going to just give this some time and then figure out my stitches and then we can finish this piece. Okay, see you next week.